Just back from Knoxville, A&M Supply. They got she stock and hardwood. It caters to cabinet makers, and it was really nice shop. We're gonna build a bathroom vanity for the upstairs room. Come on inside, let me show you what I got in mind. A bathroom vanity. Building the carcass. We're out of the truck and we're all stickered up. The warehouse that we purchased this material from was not air conditioned, so we need to give it a little chance to acclimate here in this air conditioned space. Humidity levels are considerably lower inside than they are outside. So we'll let it sit minimum two days, perhaps longer. So why have we purchased this material? Well, we're building a bathroom vanity. That is for the new bathroom that's going upstairs in the house in the new room and we're really looking forward to that. We have a contractor that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting, and he quoted us a price on a really nice bathroom vanity, something that I looked at and said, I can do that. So we're gonna build our own for quarters on the dollar, and that's where you can really make, take advantage of your nice tools and your hobby too. So we are going to be building it in the arts and crafts style. I have this side, quarter sawn white oak, and I have pulled out some crotch wood from previous projects that was left over, and we're gonna use that for some door panels. I think it's gonna be magnificent. Up front, I've got soft maple. That is gonna be for secondaries, things like drawer boxes and the occasional shelf that's inside. Now to build the carcass, behind me, I have got maple plywood and it's some pretty good stuff. I'm looking forward to using it. While the wood acclimates, we can break down this plywood. I have a cut list, and we'll just simply cut out all the pieces according to that list. I've gotten all the edges roughed out on the track saw, but I have always like to clean up things on the table saw. Although you can't see it, there is another roller on the other side. When I leave the cut, both pieces are supported. While the factory edge is square, it's not real clean. We'll go ahead and trim that now. This may seem like a simple cut, but it's wider than it is long and that invites kickback. Keep good pressure against the fence. Finally, there's a myriad of smaller pieces that form up the back nail strips and the top supports. Those have to be cut too. I've got all my panels cut up, including my nailer strips and support strips over there and the bottoms closest to you, and they're coming out really nice. Next step, it is time to put in some rabbits. Now I will have a perimeter rabbit on the top and the back. That's to receive the back, the back nailers, and the stability strips that keep the cabinet stable. Now, that is a rabbit, and it has to be the thickness of the plywood. Now, the plywood ordinarily is not three quarters of an inch. It's slightly smaller, unless it is. And in this case, it is three quarters of an inch. This is combination core. And we have an MDF strip on out the outside, just under the veneer on both sides. This makes for an extremely stable product. We have plywood in the middle, so you can use screws. This is the best of both worlds, and it's the first time I've used it, and I'm very pleased. I have high hopes for how this is going to finish out. So again, we're gonna put rabbits on the outside, and we're gonna put a dado just to receive the bottom above the toe kick. Our blades are stacked in the saw. Let's get after it. I have to make a rabbit. My tool of choice is the table saw. We'll put the dado stack in and just bring the sacrificial fence up to the edge, making a good clean cut. When making a dado, I'd say the same thing is true. The table saw is the tool of choice, especially for large panels. Finally, do check and see which side you're on. While the table saw is great for dados and rabbits, nothing touches the bandsaw for cutting out a toe kick. 
You might think that that's a big deal on cabinetry and it's probably a little overkill. But there's no reason not to be accurate. So now that we've got our stop made, let's look to make sure that we are making a cut on a previous cut and go through. And not that you can do anything about it at this point, but it's always good to double check. I'm starting to look at the plywood back. What we're going to have here is a piece of plywood that is even with the back here. So we need a rabbit here and a rabbit here. Let's take this over to the table saw and cut those rabbits. No need for the dado stack. I have the blade raised to a little over a quarter of an inch and I'll use that to score the face of the plywood. We'll reset the fence so that we only cut away the thickness of the quarter inch plywood. And we will raise the blade so that we get a good clean cut where we made our scoring line. It's time to start thinking about how we're going to assemble this piece. Now ordinarily, I might use brads because plywood, it takes brads very well. But we've got a plywood basically with five plies here and the two outside plies are MDF with the veneer on top. And I'm not too sure how brads are going to work with that. I'm not really willing to take a chance on it. So I'm going to use screws. And the first thing I want to do is I want to take a look at this and see where my panels are. Now I've got a panel right here and that's fine. That's easy enough. But I do want each of these screws in the center. On this side over here, I've got a rabbit. Don't necessarily want to hit that because there's too much going on. And I do know that it's right here. So I'll make a mark at the edge of that rabbit. I'll do the same thing for the top, knowing that this nailer comes even with that top dado, not here. So once I've made my marks, I'll take myself a bit with a countersink and I will go ahead and drill through the center. I'm not going to go through that hole. I'm not going to countersink it from this side, but that tells me where each of the holes are. I'll turn the piece over and then countersink the rest. For the nailers in the back strip, I am set up with marks, and those are to make sure that I hit this plywood center right here. Now, I find it's easier to make the marks forward and backwards. Once I've made them and they're all uniform, it is actually quicker at the machine and much fewer mistakes. So I have my countersinking bit set up in the drill press, and it is set up to a specific depth such that I don't drill through, and I get good consistent drills each time. Just a matter of going through all these and getting them done. It's time for a little assembly. And we're going to start with the upper back L bracket. That's made with these two pieces right here. Now this piece right here is cut to the same width, so that'll help balance it out when we put this plate on top. Now you'll notice that I've got screws already put in place. What you probably can't see are these little nibs right here, and they are protruding because when I put glue on this, it's going to get slickery. And as soon as I push down on that drill, it's going to move. That's a given. This is actually an advantage that screws have over brads because when I push the nailer down on it, it'll move then too. And it's sometimes, despite all your efforts, you can't get a good clean setting of the, your plates on top. So this is, in my mind, a superior way to do it. Now, I'm just gonna put a bead of glue right here. And as you know, I like to use my finger. It's messy, but effective. Now we will get this put in place again, touch even. The sides are more important than the front or the back. And you can already feel those nibs starting to grab. Push down a bit, drive him home.
This is the back and we're gonna use the same procedure except I've got it secured in my vise here. Uh, don't have another one of these to measure up to. Now, when I put this right here, the only thing really to pay attention to, aside from alignment, is to make sure that you've got your rabbet in to receive the back on the inside. Well, anyone and everyone who's ever built a cabinet knows what I'm doing now. I'm sanding the inside. You never want to do that after you've assembled it. This is the last of the three, and this back panel is giving me a bit of trouble. So we're going to end up going through a few extra steps. So I thought I would show you this one and its assembly so you can see what it's like to do one that's a bit problematic. The other two, they went together fine, but they're smaller. So that has a lot to do with it. So let me get set up here and we'll run through the sequence. I have the side sitting flat on my bench and right now that is strictly a placeholder to keep all the various pieces in place. I will put a bead of glue on the back panel. The rabbits are there to receive it, and the glue, once dry, provides an enormous amount of stiffness. At this point, it seems like the assembly is pretty simple. You're probably wondering, why all the fuss? We're just putting panels in place and everything seems to be sitting up just right. Well, let's give it just a moment here. Once the bottom and nailers and back are in place, I'll go ahead and use some clamps to make sure they're secured tightly against the bottom panel. Now I've got to put a little bit of a block in so that I am pressing just above the top of the rabbit. I want to press against the nailers, not the panel itself. Now remember, the bottom panel is just to provide a place to put these things and keep them aligned. We're really gluing in and securing the top panel, and that's the reason for the glue on top. This is where it gets a little problematic. I have a long dado and a couple of rabbits to fit in, and four different pieces that are all supposed to work together. As you might imagine, they don't. This is where an extra set of hands would help, but uh, it's just me. Well, I think you get the picture. I just wanted you to see it firsthand. We'll speed this up a touch. And there we have it, a finished carcass. Let's move this one next to the others. Well, I've got three carcasses assembled, at least the plywood parts, and that was my objective. They have gone together very well. Everything's nice and square, everything is tight, and they are heavy. I'm glad I broke these up into three pieces, otherwise I would have some difficulty not only navigating the stairs because of the size, but also carrying the weight it's definitely a two-person job so here we are we've got three cases and they will butt up next to each other now the doors and drawers are going to be inset and in between each division and on each end we're going to have a fake leg so that's going to hide the joinery almost completely the next step in this process is to start milling up lumber and I'm going to get after that I'm gonna get after that behind the camera. So by the time you come back, I hope to have achieved first dimension, and then we can start moving forward with getting second and final dimension for all the various pieces of the white oak that form up the face frame, and maybe even get some doors assembled. We'll see how that goes. All this is to get ready for the fuming process. I've yet to build the tent, and that's coming up as well. So I hope to see you next time in Roby's workshop.